In functional range conditioning, if we see limitations in movement, the primary tool that we use to expand range of motion is called pales and rails. PALES stands for Progressive Angular Isometric Loading, and PALES are isometric contractions that strengthen the open angle of whatever joint position we're working on. So the open angle is the side where the muscles and tissues are lengthening or that are on stretch. RAILS, on the other hand, stands for Regressive Angular Isometric Loading. So the isometric contractions during, during rails help to strengthen the muscles and tissue that are on the closing angle of the joint position. So those are the muscles and tissues that are shortened. Tails and rails work to expand range of motion two ways. First of all, when we're in an end range position and we're able to apply force on either side of the joint, it sends some signals to the nervous system that, hey, like, you know, this position may be safe because I can generate force on either side of the joint. The pales contraction does help to override the central nervous system stretch reflex, and then with the rails contraction, we're able to pull a little bit deeper into range of motion, into a deeper range of motion. So over time, as we progressively build up the pales and rails work, we can we'll look to expand the current range of motion. Secondly, by strengthening the muscles and tissue on either side of the joint at the end ranges allows those end ranges to be actively acquired over time to make them into usable active ranges of motion. So we're here to talk about hip internal rotation. So I'm going to show you three different setups to work on hip internal rotation pales and rails. Now the intent of pales and rails in terms of the direction of the isometric loading that you are creating is very important. So in these positions, we're looking to create a rotational input into the joint as opposed to more of a linear input to the joint, okay, because we're looking to expand hip internal rotation. Sometimes uh, rotational pales and rails can be a little challenging to grasp at first. You think of pales as the push. So you're in your end range of motion, the pales contraction is trying to reverse that range of motion or push, your, push yourself out of the range of motion that you're in. So we're going to be in hip internal rotation in these uh, setups that I'm going to show you. So the pales contraction is always going to be to try to externally rotate your hip out of the position that we're in. And you can think of rails as more the pull. So the rails contraction is going to be to try to pull yourself deeper into hip internal rotation in whatever uh, position I have you set up in. The first position I'm going to show you requires kind of the most equipment or the most set up time. So you're going to need a chair or perhaps you could use like a, a low table or maybe even a couch might work in your house. You're going to need uh, probably at least one yoga block or you know a firm cushion could also work. So before we actually get into the setup of the hip internal rotation pails and rails, I want to do a few hip capsule cars from the same base position that we're going to be working on our pails and rails. So let's go ahead and lie down on your right hip. I'm going to use one of my blocks as a pillow for my head. So we're going to take a side lying position here. I've got my left hip stacked over my right hip. My knees are bent in, so I've got 90 degrees of hip flexion here. I'm going to take another yoga block and place it between my knees. Okay, and from here, just the capsule cars, and they're more focused just on internal rotation, not really able to go into external rotation so much in this position. You're going to crush the block between your knees. You're going to internally rotate that top hip, so you will be pressing up through the pinky toe side of that foot. So this is an internal rotation. The thigh, the femur bone turns in towards the midline and the foot will go up. Okay, that's internal rotation. Make sure here that you're not crunching up on that side of the waist. So we don't want to do like a, uh, like a tilt there of the pelvis. We want to try to keep it strict to internally rotating the femur bone here in the hip socket. So just practice a couple of those. Okay, so come into internal rotation, pause at the top try to fight for more. Okay, so when we're trying to actively hold this internal rotation, a lot of stuff here along this kind of outer hip starting to fire up might be almost cramping. Slow her down, do one more. Stay here. So take a look at what your active hip internal rotation range of motion is. So we're going to try to slide and create the same position 
using our chair to help prop up that top foot. Okay, now this, that was your active range of motion. So it's possible that passively, you might be able to get a little bit more. So maybe you're gonna take a block or you know, some other object just to make the surface of what you're placing the, the, the ankle of the foot on a bit higher. So when we set up the pails and rails in this position, 90 degrees of hip flexion, we wanna be fairly close to our end range of motion and internal rotation in the top hip. Okay, so I'm gonna maneuver myself around. Like I said, this setup is, I like, I like this setup for hip internal rotation, pails and rails, because some of the other positions can be a bit taxing on knees or just um, the way we're sitting in an upright position. I like this setup a lot, but it can take a little bit more kind of maneuvering to get into the right position. Okay, so again, we wanna be close to our end range of motion in internal rotation for the top hip. So if I try to internally rotate more and lift my, my ankle off that block, I, I can't really, it feels pretty stuck. I can't really rotate more and create a lift off, okay? So we're just gonna sit here for a few breaths. And take a full breath in, slowly exhale out, really try to slow that exhalation down, and full breath in, and slow and full breath out, let's take a couple more. So things to consider here in this setup, make sure your hips are stacked, you could have another pillow or something underneath your head, I'm just going to use my bottom arm. One more full breath in here and slowly exhale out. So like we talked about earlier, Hale's contraction is always trying to push yourself out of a particular position. So here, this top hip is in internal rotation. Our Hale's contraction is gonna to be to try to externally rotate out as if you're gonna lift the knee up and kind of kick the foot towards the floor. Of course, since these are isometric contractions, there'll be actual no, actually no visible movement in the body except some shakes might start uh, kicking in. Okay, so let's take a full breath in and, and with the pails and rails, we're gonna, you're gonna think of the pails contraction like a volume dial. So we're gonna start with low effort, we're gonna slowly dial it up. So it'll be like 10% effort, 20, 30, and so on. And that way where you're also teaching your nervous system how to control force. You're not just going like all out at once and then dying. You wanna have some degree of time under tension here in the muscle tissue so that we can start to really start to own and create strength here in these ranges of motion. Okay, so let's take a full breath in. Exhale out, pack the breath low. 10% effort, start pressing down into the big toe side of the foot, into your block, whatever object you have that top foot resting on. Remember, we're thinking about trying to rotate the hip outward out of this position. Okay, keep the knees pressing into the block okay, and keep trying to turn this hip out, the top hip out, 20 to 20%. So we're slowly ramping up that intensity, 30%. Feel quite a bit of tissue in the outer hip working. We're trying to, again, we're trying to externally rotate out of this position. 40%. Let's ramp up to about 50% here. Might be a little bit of shaking going on. You can also think of trying to engage elsewhere in your body to help create body irradiation so you can create more force. Keep driving down into that foot. Trying to externally rotate that top hip. And let's hold there. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch to the rails contraction. You're still gonna keep trying to crush the block between the knees. Try to internally rotate this top hip even more. So try to get light of your, on your foot. So try to minimize how much you're pressing down into the block. Again, if you're at your end range of motion, there will likely be no lift off. But what the important thing is, is that you're training this tissue here, trying to rotate here and hold. Keep trying to internally rotate more. This is where cramping may occur. Five, four, three, two, one. And relax, take a couple breaths in. We want to follow up the pails and rails contraction with a few deeper breaths and we're trying to really slow the inhalation, really slow the exhalation. So we're going to go through that one more time. 
This time, so we went up to approximately 50% effort. If that felt you know, challenging or if you're newer to pails and rails, of course, maybe that's a good starting point. If you can ramp up further than that and it's still pain-free, pails and rails should be challenging and you should feel, start shaking and feel muscles and stuff working, but it shouldn't be painful. It shouldn't be any sharp pain. Okay, so maybe ramp up a little bit more tension this time. Take a full breath in, exhale out, pack the breath low. 10 to 20 percent effort start driving that foot down into your chair into your block whatever it's propped up on you're trying to externally rotate the top hip out of this position okay 20 to 30 percent 40 to 50 percent maybe a little bit more on this last one 60 to 70 percent really talk to that outer hip try to get it to externally rotate keep crushing the block though don't come out of this uh, internal rotated position. Hold there, maybe a little bit more effort. Hold and squeeze, press down. If someone tried to lift your ankle off that block or that chair, there's no way they would get it off. You're pressing down so much. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch to the rail. Stop pressing down into the ankle. Try to get light on that ankle. Don't shift anything in the pelvis. You're turning that thigh bone in. Try to lift the foot up. Mine feels glued, but I'm still making the effort of trying to lift it up. Shakes, shakes are happening. Five, four, three, two, one. And relax. Full breaths in. Whew. Full breaths out. Right, let's climb on out of that. So that this is one setup for hip internal rotation, pails and rails. You're in hip flexion, 90 degrees of hip flexion. Um, again, I like that one in some ways because the next two positions we're gonna go into can be a bit challenging for some people. Okay, so obviously we just did one hip. So if, you can, if you're watching this, you can rewind and do the other hip. For purposes of this video, I'm just gonna do one hip. The second position that we're going to work on hip internal rotation, pails and rails is from the air sit position. So bear sit again is in hip flexion plus hip abduction, legs apart. Now if you're sitting here in this position and already you know, you're, you're slumping back, you can't sit upright or you're just feeling a lot of pinching here in the hip flexors, stage one would be to try to elevate your butt so you could sit on your blocks, come a little bit higher so this, the angle of hip flexion isn't quite as intense. Okay. So yeah, and you can prop yourself up kind of as high as is necessary. And then let's take the hands behind. And also you can lean back. If your spine long, you can also lean back. Again, that's gonna kind of like uh, kind of lessen the intensity of this, the hip flexion angle here. So like on the, on the first position for hip IR, pails and rails, we did a few capsule cars or those internal rotation movements just so we could kind of feel the position we're going into. Let's do the same here. So again, I'm just keep working on my left hip. So from bear sit, I'm gonna internally rotate my left hip. The left knee is going to move towards the floor, keep the left sitting bone down. Okay, so this is internal rotation in a bear sit position. Now let's just externally rotate back out of that. And again, internally rotate. Pause at that end range and externally rotate back out. Okay, let's take one more. Come into internal rotation and then we're gonna stay here. So a couple things as well. Sometimes there, people can experience uh, medial knee pain in this position. If that's you, this position may not be ideal for you to work on, hip internal rotation, pails and rails. One thing that you can try is, you know, you can kind of look at, well, what's the space between my knee and the floor? Perhaps you can get a, a yoga block or something in there to provide more support for the inner knee and that may alleviate some of the inner knee strain. Um, otherwise, just don't go down quite as far or maybe have to try one of the other positions, okay? All right, but if you're comfortable here, and we're just gonna hang out here for a few breaths. You could also take that same side hand just to apply some gentle uh, pressure there on the outer thigh. Maybe get in a little bit more passive range of motion. And again, hip internal rotation often doesn't feel too wonderful. So we're looking for stretch sensation here. Might be along the outer hip, coming along kind of the front, the top of the hip there. 
again, your internal rotation may not look like mine. You may just be up here, and that's fine. That's why we're doing fails and rails. We're looking here to, the whole reason for this is helping to expand our range of motion here in internal rotation so we can get more capsular workspace. So we can then, with that more workspace, we can train other joint, other hip joint positions more, more easily. Let's take a couple more breaths here. So we want to spend some time in our end range of motion stretch uh, before we go into the pails and rails, just to allow the nervous systems to settle, to really try to get into the end range of motion. This effective the pails and rails need to be executed at your end range of motion so the pails contraction here remember we're internally rotated pails is to push out into external rotation so it's going to be as if you're going to create this movement coming back towards bear sit in that leg and almost sweeping the foot back to the midline that would be externally rotating the hip the rails contraction is going to be to try to internally rotate even more, bring that knee lower to the ground, create more internal rotation in the hip joint. Okay, so let's give it a go. Take a full breath in, exhale out, pack the breath low. 10% effort here. You can place your left hand on your left uh, outer thigh, start pressing the leg into the hand. Also think of sweeping the left foot underneath you and back towards the right foot. Again, we're trying to get a rotational component here for the pales contraction. 20 to 30%, again, there should be no real movement here. So the left hand is pressing back into the leg to block any actual movement. Okay, let's build up more, 40%, 50%, let's just stay there. And all I can think of, just imagine externally rotating that left hip. That's all that matters right now in this pales contraction. Hold there, try to keep that intensity the same. Don't let the 50% fluctuate. Hold for five, four, three, two, one. Switch to rails. Think of turning the thigh bone in even more. Again, don't let the left sitting bone come up. It's not a turn in the torso of the pelvis. It's a rotation there in the hip joint. Just that effort of trying to turn in more, holding this range of motion, that's the rails contraction. Try to turn in more. Try to turn in more. Five, four, three, two, one. Let's stay here, take the left hand back. Again, you might get a noticeably deeper position here. Because like I, I said at the beginning, that part of the reason that pails and rails works is because those providing um, the isometric contractions on either side of the joint allows your nervous system to be like, hey, I can generate some force here. It's okay, I, I'm, I, I can be strong here. So this range of motion, yeah, it's probably okay. Let's let's test out a little bit more, a little bit deeper. Let's go for one more round of pails and rails here. This one again, maybe ramping up a bit more than, than the previous one. Take a full breath in, exhale out, pack the breath low. Always start low effort to see how you're gonna feel, 10 to 20%. Start trying to externally rotate out of this position. A lot of stuff in the outer hip working, 30 to 40%. 50 to 60 percent, try to get more of the upper body involved, press down into the opposite hand, squeeze the muscles in the other leg, maybe 70 to 80 percent, maybe a little bit more force, a little bit more effort than that first round, and you're trying to press the left foot down through the floor and back towards the midline. Hold there, five, four, three, two, one, switch to the rails. We're trying to squeeze and push, pull, I mean, sorry, pull in more internal rotation there. You're squeezing out as much internal rotation as you can get, as if you're trying to get light on the left ankle. By turning the thigh in, almost like lifting the left ankle up. Five, four, three, two, one. Take the left hand back, breathe, settle into that range, full breaths in. Low and full breaths out. Okay, and then come on out of that position. Woo! The third position for hip internal rotation pails and rails that I want to show you is from a 90-90 base position. So continue to work on the left hip. Okay. So for 90-90, 
We're going to set up 90 degree angles in both our legs, hence the name 90-90, right? So right leg is going to be your front leg. Have your right knee in front of your right hip. Right shin parallel to the top of your yoga mat. If you have a yoga mat, or just make a 90 degree angle um, of your right leg. On the back hip, the left hip, left knee directly out from the left hip, left shin parallel to the long edge of your mat, or again, you know, you know, guys all know what a 90 degree angle is, so make that with your legs. Now, a lot of people, 90 to 90, I would say that this of the other, uh, the other positions, 90 to 90 is the most challenging because, of course, you've got, you know, the front legs and external rotation. This is quite a bit of um, hip abduction in the trail leg, so this can be challenging. If you feel like you're falling, over to the side, can't get comfortable here, I would stick with training hip internal rotation in either the sideline setup or in the bear sit setup. Um, a couple things that you can try to do to help you here if you feel like you're falling over um, to the right side. Option one, place a yoga block underneath your right hand, okay, just to help elevate, stay a bit taller through the spine. Another option, Place a block or blocks underneath the right hip. Again, the more that you elevate your hips, the less hip abduction you're gonna place on this back leg, and that, that might be more comfortable and more and easier to work there. Okay? Another thing that you could potentially do is you can also lean quite a bit away from the trail leg, away from your left leg, and so you're decreasing the angle here. Okay? So for purposes of this, I'm just gonna stay down on directly on the floor. The trail leg of 90-90 is already in hip internal rotation. We also have a lot of hip abduction. The more that you work on sitting the left sitting bone down towards the ground, again, it's likely your, that left glute is not going to touch unless you have crazy amounts of internal rotation. Trying to set this hip back and down. Also, the more you turn your torso towards the back leg, the more internal rotation you're going to place that hip in. And again, leaning back onto the hands can make this position a bit more tolerable. Okay, or if you have more range, you can even sit up a bit taller and take your hands somewhere on that trail leg. Okay, and the front knee sometimes is kind of floating up in space. I'm gonna place a block here under my front knee because that's actually gonna help create some tension when we go into our pails and rails. So again, pails is to push out of the position we're in. We're in internal rotation here in this back hip. So if you imagine that my leg is still on the floor here, this is a trail leg in 90-90, the pails contraction, I'm gonna sweep that foot underneath and externally rotate out of that position. Okay, so from your, end, your passive range of motion here, another, another thing that can be helpful here in this position when we get into the pails is to imagine that there's a scale underneath that ankle. So as we get into the pales contraction, you're gradually putting more and more weight down into that back ankle to externally rotate out. When we go into the rails contraction, you're trying to you know, minimize the weight that's on that imaginary scale under the ankle. So let's take a full breath in. Exhale out, pack the breath down. 10% effort. Start driving down into this back ankle as if you're going to externally rotate the hip out of the position it's in. Ramp up to 20. Slowly ramping up to 30. Press your hands down and away into the floor to help create some tension in the upper body. 40%. 50%. This first round, let's stay there. So if someone tried to lift your ankle off the ground, there's no way they would be able to because you're driving down into that ankle. You're driving down into the knee as well too, but more through the ankle to get that rotational component. Hold there, five, four, three, two, one. Switch to the rails. That knee is gonna stay heavy. Imagine you could lift the back ankle up and not from doing any weird motion with the ankle, from internally rotating that hip more. Gonna turn that left thigh in. I know it feels stuck, but it's the effort, that's the intent of trying to create more internal rotation is what we're looking for. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. Breathe. Try to set that left hip, that left glute further back, further down towards the ground. Go one more time. 
full breath in. Exhale out, pack the breath down. 10 to 20 percent. There's a scale underneath that left ankle. You're starting to put more force down there to try to externally rotate out. 30 to 40 percent. Slowly dialing up that tension. 50 to 60 percent. Again, don't let the knee jump up. Knee is still pressing down. Press down more through the ankle. 70 to 80 percent. Engage through the upper body. Engage through the other leg. Maybe a little bit more. Whatever your maximum safest effort is here. Shakes definitely might start happening. They will start happening. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch to the rails. That knee stays heavy. Imagine you could lift the ankle up. <laughs> it's, it's, even though it's glued to the floor, you're trying like crazy. Turn that back hip in. Try to set the, the left glute further back towards the floor as well. Keep going. Keep holding that intensity. Five, four, three, two, one. Stay there, breathe. Set the lift, left glute back and down a bit more. Full breath in. Slow and full breath out. Let's come on out of this position carefully. All right, so those are three different setups to work hip internal rotation pails and rails. Those aren't the only three, there's more. I thought those are some of the more useful ones. Let me know what you think. I would suggest following up those pails and rails with some hip capsule cars and hip global cars just to kind of save the work and incorporate that, that new internal rotation range of motion into the full global range of motion of the hip joints.